Okay, good morning and welcome back to our Sabbath School lesson study for today. The Lord reigns. What a beautiful concept to know that even in the midst of all the different kingdoms of this earth and all the challenges and all the battles that they have, there is a God who reigns over them all. And that's what we're going to be studying today, Peter, in the book of Psalms. It's exciting. Um, I'm seeing we got Psalms 8 to talk about, Psalms 100, Psalms 97, 75, 105. So stick with us here as we uh, do a little exploration this morning. Pastor, could you uh, pray for us just oh, before we dive into the lesson? Dear Heavenly Father, we come before the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, recognizing that you are God and recognizing you are our creator, our king, and our judge. And this gives us peace in knowing that someone who is just, someone who loves us, someone who wants the best for all people, is still in control. So we invite you to send your Holy Spirit to us that we might be able to express clearly that which is found in your word. We thank you for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So as we start, let us open to Psalms 93, um, verse 1. Psalms 93, 1 says, The Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. Indeed, the world is established, firm and secure. Amen. Which is a real big comfort to me because right now, especially in these days and times, the world is not secure. Mm -hmm. It's not firm. Um, mm -hmm. There's not really a lot established. There's a lot of infighting. There's wars. There's um, micro wars, major wars, uh, a lot of people dying. A lot of sickness, sadness, and turmoil. But this here just reminds us we have this sovereign God. So what is the whole concept of this sovereign God? The whole concept that I see um, described in this week's lesson is that as a sovereign king... He establishes a covenant with his people and not just with his people, but with the entire world. And the reason why he's able to do this is because he is the creator. And I think that's a very important point to emphasize throughout the Psalms. We see this creative power that God has that no one else has. No one else can give life. No one else can create um, living beings. But he is able to, and in doing that, he also establishes a relationship with them, which is really neat. Um, but I feel like that's not the only thing. So mm -hmm. we have that creation, but when you mention relationship, there's that, that sustenance that's going on with the creation. Um. He's ruling in justice and righteousness. Um, you have the plans and laws of the Lord, you know, written on our DNA. Mm -hmm. um, everything is, is going in the smooth motion. So there's that sustenance of taking care of everything. But... Then there's the judge aspect as well. Mm. And basically making sure everything is still well ordered. Mm -hmm. And then there's the covenant aspects as well. Mm. And it's easy when you look at like the story of the children of Israel. That's a that's a good intro mm -hmm. to um, see that relationship between them because that gives us a picture mm -hmm. of how his relationship is with us. Mm -hmm. 
um, there's a there's something about an adoption. Um, and it's not just any adoption. It's like a precious pearl type adoption, which it becomes like a prized possession. And as this, um, sovereign King and God that wants to express this relationship through his people, as, as you mentioned there in, in the old Testament, we have the people of God who, who received this covenant and where God basically wants to live among his people, um, we find, I think, something called security. We also find um, something called protection. And all that God asks of his people basically is for us to worship him. That's this gratitude part um, where it's the response for us receiving this protection, this care, this love from God is to worship him for who he is. And I think this is what we're going to see through the Psalms, these, these expressions of, of thankfulness, of gratitude, and also worship. So let's look at um, a couple Psalms. We mentioned these earlier, Psalms 8 and Psalms 100. Mm -hmm. Because the question becomes, you know, how are God's people mm -hmm. portrayed and painted in the Psalms? Mm -hmm. So let's do every other verse here. Um, I'll mm -hmm. start in Psalms 8, um, and it's 1 through 8. O Lord, our Lord. How excellent is your name in all the earth. Who have set your glory above the heavens. From the mouth of infants and sucklings, you have founded strength on account of your foes to put an end to enemy and avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have ordained, what is man that you have been mindful of him? Mortal man that you have taken note of him. For you have made him a little lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him master over your handiwork, laying the world at his feet. All sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens, the fish of the sea, whatever travels the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. So what is a psalm like this portray God's people as? And I guess, how do you see God's character portrayed in this? That's a beautiful question. You see um, clearly the manifestation of a God who is powerful to create, to make. And once he's made all these beautiful things, um, he gives them to his children, to his beloved children, to his people. He puts everything that he's made under their feet. And the response, again, is one of worship, one of gratitude. And now Psalms 100. Mm -hmm. This is another oh, beautiful one. And you'll notice in all these, there's that element of praise and glorification. Mm -hmm. And why does God need our praise? I think this is, this is something that even human beings, um, when they do something, they don't necessarily want praise for it. But mm -hmm. when somebody is grateful and says, thank you, Something as simple as that. Thank you. You know, it, it, it's something that they go, wow. Okay, they noticed. They noticed that we did something for them. And, and so here God is basically um, praised, um, proclaimed by his people. And, and what they do basically, again, is they speak of all his wondrous acts. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's the, the beauty, again, of, of worship. Worship is not something that is geared 
toward us, which sometimes we feel that way maybe. You know, worship is for me. But no, worship is really for God, even though he gets worshipped by angels and and all of his creation worships him. I mean, there's there's beasts in heaven that are, that's all they do is say, holy, holy, holy. Yeah, that's right. Eternally. Eternally, so, correct. And they are more holy than us as sinners. That's right, they are. So, you know, you compare among ourselves us versus the holy creatures it's yeah. like mm-hmm. i don't know if i feel like i what i'm going to present is of any use mm-hmm. to god but then there's that element of the gift of the sacrifice and the salvation he's given us mm-hmm. and each individual um and it was such a massive sacrifice mm-hmm. And maybe there's an element here too, Peter. One, I think that, that we maybe not, don't talk too much about. Okay. But of great importance. And this is the idea of remembering. Hmm. If we do not worship, we forget what God has done. Yeah. So it's an opportunity for us to recount, to retell, to remember what He has done for us. And... I think that's very important when it comes to worshiping and, and proclaiming and, and, you know, telling of all that he has done. Yeah. Okay, Psalms 100. Make a joyful shout mm. to the Lord, all you lands. Worship the Lord in gladness. Come into his presence with shouts of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with praise, his courts with acclamation. Praise him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Amen. You you think of... Another another element is like Psalms 19. When we talk about Psalms mm-hmm. 19 and the beautiful beauties of creation, beautiful. Um, there's that handiwork, and when you have that aspect of God creating everything so intricately, mm-hmm. and then you have that aspect of Him being there as a shepherd, we're the sheep. Mm-hmm. It makes me thankful and grateful mm-hmm. because. He could just leave us to ourselves. And, you know, that's what some people believe. Mm -hmm. um, That we are created and just left to go. Um, Like uh, one of those atomic clocks or whatever that you can just set going and it'll last another 100,000 years or whatever. But um, that aspect of being able to be a shepherd, but also controlling the forces of nature mm. there, there's a element of awe to that mm-hmm. and I think this is again important what you're mentioning because as, as we've noticed in the past as well as in the present um, human beings we've given reason of the existence of these things to other beings God's made out of stone, God's made out of wood, God's made out of, you know, even natural things. Mm -hmm. Or we've just said, you know, there is no such thing as a God. This just happened. Mm. But here again, we are reminded that the God we worship, the God we serve, is the one who made the heavens and the earth and all that is in it. And so... It, 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 it makes it very, um, it, it describes the source of all of these things. And if God's the one who made us, Peter, he's the one who knows too what's best for us. Yeah. We can trust him. We can follow his word knowing that he cares and wants the best for us. 
Well, but it can still be hard for us to trust. It can. Because we think we know what we want. That's true. But we can't see the future. That's true. So that can be a difficult element for us to work through. It is, and it's interesting that you mentioned that because what it comes down to is that all of nature, if you notice, does something for someone else. Hmm. They are there to serve, and specifically they're there to serve us. Yeah. And yet human beings are the one part of creation that has a hard time serving each other. (laughs) Yeah. Psalms 8 verse 4 says, What is man that you are mindful of him? Mm. And the son of man that you visit him. What does a verse like that mean? I think the psalmist recognizes that we've been ungrateful. We've been selfish, we've been greedy, we've been unfaithful, we've been um, just difficult. And and so he recognizes this and he says, why would a God so powerful and, and, and majestic, you know, take the time to be with us or talk to us or care for us and then of course Psalms 147 verse 4 says he counts the number of the stars Mm -hmm. he calls them all by name Mm -hmm. which is pretty incredible because even if we had a book of all the visible stars (laughs) because there's all the visible stars up here but when you point you know Whichever telescope is currently in vogue yes. um, um, at a certain portion of the sky, you are shocked by the fact that that dark, empty space between the visible stars actually hosts mm-hmm. not just a handful, but hundreds of galaxies. Mm-hmm. And... Um, and each it's one of those of, galaxies have hundreds of thousands of stars. Yeah. So mm. it, it just makes you feel really small. So if you're ever in a really bad mood or have mm. a really big difficult situation in front mm. of you and everything just seems against you, just mm. consider and zoom out in your mind mm-hmm. that... We're here on this itty-bitty planet in this massive universe and whatever that huge burdening um, burden Mm -hmm. is that's crushing you is not really... um, doesn't really have the power to crush you. Mm -hmm. You just got to look beyond and... You know, this is not to negate whatever you're going through. This is just to be there to encourage you. And again, if you are going through a difficult time right now and need prayer, Mm -hmm. feel free to reach out to pastor at tridelphiachurch.org. But it's when I'm, when I'm dealing with certain difficulties and challenges to be able to zoom out into the universe and realize that these pretty significant challenges that I see are significant challenges may not be as big as I think they are. Mm. And that there are other things going on in the world. And you mentioned service earlier, which reminds me is when we are involved in service, that's also a way that we, we we're thinking less about what all the issues that we have and um, putting ourselves in a position to help others, be there for others, and as you're helping them through their situations, it kind of takes a lot of the burden and the pain off of yourself. Uh, and there was a quote here in some supplemental notes. It was a nice uh, little um, 
Ellen White quote says, The beauties in nature are a theme for contemplation. In studying the natural loveliness surrounding us, the mind is carried up through nature to the author of all that is lovely. All the works of God are speaking to our senses, magnifying His power, exalting His wisdom. Every created thing has in it charms which interest the child of God to mold his taste to regard these precious evidences of God's love above the work of human skill. The prophet, in words of glowing fervor, magnifies God in his created works. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him? the Son of Man, that thou visitest him, and as well as, O Lord, O Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart I will show forth all thy marvelous works. So it's like, um, you know, this week, Maryland had a pretty significant snowfall. And my family in Tennessee, hello if you're watching, um, also had a pretty significant dump, especially for Tennessee. I think it's 67 inches, and we got wow. five-ish, maybe six in a couple places, depending on where you are in Maryland. Mm -hmm. The what, more west you go, the more snow you get, uh, at least in this one, it seems like. Um, but um, there's, there's a magic of snow that it also points to a creator. Um, there's that element that no snowflake is the same as another snowflake, which reminds me of that whole star situation. Um, because I don't feel like one galaxy is like another galaxy. One star is like another star. Millions of light years away or however they do their measurements. But... This week, um, it was nice because I could take my six-month-old out to experience snow for the first time. And it's cold outside. I got her a little snowsuit, and she reached out and um, takes a grab at it. And then there's that, like, moment of processing. And then she pulled the other arm around and wanted to go with both hands, you know? <laughs> like, this is interesting. And I think at some point, the cold started setting in and then she started you know little gears start turning and you see how she's reacting but uh snow is one of those things where if you're not on the road it can be a very beautiful thing to enjoy and appreciate and i feel like it's just one of those other things in creation that in spite of sin and the, the fall and all these other things there's this beautiful pointing to the creator mm -hmm. in the midst of the snow. Mm -hmm. And it you, you find all these little elements, even among thorns, there's the roses, even um, in certain other things. It's just, there's always that, that beauty and that glorifying of the majestic God that we serve. That's beautiful. And, and it reminds me of Psalm 97. And we might not be able to read the entire Psalm, but again, it's, it's, a rem, it's, it's the Psalmist telling us to worship God, to praise him because of his creative power. Yeah. And, and his ability to do all these things and and as human beings we're we're constantly discovering new things even today as we speak you know about our universe about our earth about the ocean about our own body um scientists you know they they recognize they they're just tapping the surface scraping the surface as as they say and and we have an opportunity to speak to that um creator and praise him uh, Psalms 93 verse 1 says, The Lord reigns. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed. He has girded himself with strength. Surely the world is established so that it cannot 
be moved. In Psalms 96 verse 10 says, Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world also is firmly established, it shall not be moved. He shall judge the peoples righteously. Amen. In 97.1, the Lord is king. Let the earth exult, the many islands rejoice. And let's read 99.1 as well. The Lord enthroned on cherubim is king. People tremble, the earth quakes. Mm. So the earth moves with that that glory and that praising of him which you know every time there's an earthquake there's there's two things i think about you know i, I think about the tectonic plates of course and <laughs> the scientific aspects of it and uh I have this little app that tracks it so uh, every time there's a big one i i'm notified and it's kind of fun to track um but they can also be devastating but I think back to times like when God gave the Ten Commandments. Okay. Um, he came down to the mountain. You know, the earth quaked. And there was lightnings and fire and all sorts of things. And I I, I believe that one day when, when Jesus comes, and, you know, I believe Revelation also talks about the great earthquakes and different things like that. Um there's going to be a, a mighty earthquake as well. And there's also the element that graves open and the dead are released mm -hmm. and coming back in a, a beautiful body. There was a little bit of a foretaste of that. I know we talked about that a while back in some lessons. Uh, when, when Jesus died, you know, the earth quaked. Um, there was... All creation understanding what went on, even if the hearts of individuals were closed mm -hmm. to that, there was still that recognition of the momentous event that had taken place. And the earth opened up and some individuals that had passed away uh, for their faith um, were out walking around in Jerusalem uh, meeting people. So, um, but when we talk about this, uh, Lord reigns aspect, um, there's so many texts in this lesson mm. that there's no way we can get to all of them, That's right. but I don't know if there's any that you want to share. I want to share this Psalms 104 verse 2. It says, Who cover yourself with light as a garment, who stretch out the heavens like a curtain. Um, you know, we always think of the vast expanse of sky. And it's just like opening the curtains in the morning. Something super easy for God to do. Psalm 97, verse 6 says, The heavens proclaim His righteousness, and all mm. people see His glory. Man. And so again, a reminder of, of everything around us speaks loudly about who God is. Yeah. And how perfect and, and, and amazing He does all that He does. When we have all this aspect of, of God reigning... Now we recognize that there's the element of judging as well. Mm -hmm. Psalms 75 mm -hmm. says, We give, give thanks to you, O God. Mm -hmm. We give thanks for your wondrous works declare that your name is near. Mm -hmm. When I chose the proper time, I will judge uprightly. Mm -hmm. The earth and all its inhabitants are dissolved. I set its pillars firmly. I said to the boastful, do not deal boastfully, and to the wicked, do not lift up the horn. Do not lift the, the horn on high, do not speak with a stiff neck, for exultation comes neither from the east or from the west or from the south, but God is judge. He puts down one, exalts another. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup, 
Wine is red, it's fully mixed. He pours it out. Surely its dregs shall all the wicked of the earth drain and drink down. But I will declare forever, I will sing praise to the God of Jacob. All the horns of the wicked I will also cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about this? Yes, this psalm is, is, is one that um, clearly states that God should be praised because he is the one who will judge. And maybe this idea of judging doesn't sound so positive. But in a world where there is so much injustice, where there is so much unrighteousness, where there is so much evil, um, we are invited to trust that there is a God who will bring all things to its right status. And that means for the wicked, they will be, they will be judged as wicked, and for the righteous, they will be judged as righteous. And, and so that gives us peace, that should give us assurance that God sees what maybe other human beings don't want to see, and He hears our plead, um, maybe something other human beings can't hear, and so it, it should give us uh, a sense of, of, um, of comfort. And in this context, I think also the word forgiveness is important. Mm. And many of us might feel like, oh, I can't come before God. But this is a God who is also willing to forgive us when we've done the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's the element of, of justice. Um, you know, like in Psalm, like, so it doesn't matter where in Psalms, there's always these little aspects of verses here and there. But Psalms 14, verse 2, for instance, the Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand who seek God. And I think that's a beautiful text. Um, there are situations like in Genesis where he looked down and he didn't see what he liked. Um, but this is more a verse of promise. Mm -hmm. Because if you seek, you will find. Right. Because he's looking to see who is seeking to understand and who is seeking God. You also have verses like Psalms 139, uh, where, you know, starting verse 23, it says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties, and see if there's any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. So, there's God searching, but there's also the elements of us searching for God, mm -hmm. understanding that He is the judge. Um, he's the judge of peoples, like Psalms 7 puts it. Mm -hmm. He's the judge according to my righteousness, according to the integrity within me. So it you can't trick God. He can see through all the fakeness. Um, he can see through all the injustice mm -hmm. but it's not something to fear as someone who's seeking for god um as someone who understands how the process of salvation works mm -hmm. um it should just inspire you to be the hands and feet of jesus and look for those who are searching so that you can connect the two together and Jesus can use us to reach others. Psalm 67 verse 4 says, O let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you shall judge the people righteously and govern the nations on earth. Um, there's an aspect also that is brought up in our lesson for this week, um, that God is ever mindful of His covenant. And specifically in Psalm 105, okay, verse 7 and 8. And if you want to read that, Peter. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever. The word which he commanded for a thousand generations. Mm. And so it clearly states that God doesn't just judge according to what he sees or hears or feels. But he does it in the context of this covenant. A yeah. covenant that he made with humanity from the very beginning. Yeah, it's beautiful. It is. And um, this psalm, if, if you just go to like um, 
verse 11, um, part of the covenant was, I will give the land of Canaan as your allotted heritage. And we mm -hmm. might say, well, that, that was something in the past. But as Christians, we look forward to the heavenly Canaan. Yes, and, and God tells us, I've given this to you. But trust me and, and follow my ordinances. And, and maybe that's another part about a covenant relationship. It's not just what God can do for me, but what is it that I can also do for him? And that's this trust relationship that, that Jesus wants, that God wants to establish with his people, where we trust him and the way we show it is by obeying him. <laughs> yeah, and if you look more in depth in the verse you talk, there, there's that contrast between the Jews and the Gentiles and different things like that. Mm -hmm. But if you remember from the New Testament, you have aspects like Galatians 3, you know, for you are all sons of God through the faith in Jesus Christ. You know, or as many as you were baptized into Christ have put on Christ, there's neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, etc. Et and it just kind of covers all bases there in that there's no them versus us anymore. There's no right versus left. There's no, um, you know, basically compart compartmentalizing a group into some type of box. It's once you're baptized into Christ and a child of Christ, you're all on the same team and you're all in one accord. And, and, that, and that connects well with also um, God being king because when he establishes his rulership, when he establishes his covenant, um, he does this for all. And the mm -hmm. idea there is for all to be one. That's the ultimate goal, because right now we're pretty divided into yeah. so many different, you know, nations and languages and religions. But God wants to bring his people home. And the only way he can do this is if they also recognize their need for unity. Mm -hmm. Um. So there's a lot more you can study and go ahead and just follow in the PDF if you'd like to look up some of these verses. I mean, we mm -hmm. could spend probably three weeks on this lesson, but Pastor, could you close um, with that Steps to Christ quote from Friday's lesson? Yes, and the quote says, the more we study the divine character in the light of the cross, the more we see mercy, tenderness, and forgiveness blended with equity and justice. And the more clearly we discern innumerable evidences of a love that is infinite and a tender pity surpassing a mother's yearning sympathy for her wayward child. Steps to Christ, page 15. So I think it just comes down to restoration. Mm. And there's that um, aspect of the divine character that when we're so hand in hand with Christ we catch that vision that God has mm -hmm. for reaching others. And, mm -hmm. you know, the quote mentions the emotions of uh, the mother's yearning sympathy for the wavered child. But really, you look at the the shepherding aspects of, of Psalms, we're the wayward child. And... God is yearning to be with us and yearning for us to grasp that gift of salvation um, and fully accept that love and grace that he has provided. Yeah. And for that, I can do nothing but praise and glorify God. Amen. And gift. there's really nothing else that I can say that other than it is my aim to magnify and Amen. glorify God. Not that he needs it from me, but that it's hard to explain, but mm -hmm. um, he's grateful for our gratefulness. Amen. Pastor, could you close us with prayer? I'll be glad to. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again for your majesty, for your 
um, for the way you rule our earth, even when we sometimes don't quite understand why things happen, but we know that you're still in control. You're still looking out for us. You're still trying to bring unity in a divided world. You're still trying to bring healing in a broken world. You're still trying to um, shape our thoughts in such a way that we will be aware of all that you're doing for us. And so today we come with grateful hearts. We come with thankfulness and with um, praise for being the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and for being our Creator, Redeemer, and also our friend. And so we thank you for this opportunity to talk to you and talk about you and share with others the things that um, men and women understood and share with us through the Psalms. So we thank you again for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Um, we will continue on next week. Um, the title of our lesson next week is The Lord Hears and Delivers. So you can imagine what Psalms that might include. Yeah. But um, let us go ahead and close here. And if you want to like, subscribe, and share the video, it would help us uh, boost our reach so that other people can be blessed. So if you really enjoyed the video, share it with your friends and um, call your neighbors and tell them. Um, take care. Happy Sabbath and God bless.